to show appreciation, thankfulness, and love that don't require any physical contact. Talk okay. amongst yourselves. Yeah, yeah exactly. I know people are like, there. okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now here's David and Cindy with a Happy look at what's coming up at 6 o'clock. Thank you both. A Grundy County School Board member has tendered his resignation, citing division among the board members and the group not working in the best interest of students. It gives me hope to see that our school is doing something different to help other people. Howard High School's football team and cheerleaders spent today giving back to the community. Crime Stoppers need your help with a cold case. The victim had only lived in Chattanooga for five months before being shot as he walked home from work. Your tip could help close this case. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 6. Tonight we have more on the shakeup within the Grundy County School Board. It comes on the heels of an attempted rape case involving five football players. The board's chairman resigned. Channel 3's Caitlin Chastain has been following the story and she got a copy of the resignation letter delivered by Robert Foster. Caitlin, why did he resign? David Cindy, in his resignation letter, Robert Foster wrote, quote, I love Grundy County with all my heart and wish the board well. However, I fear major changes are in order if the board is to truly do its job. In the letter to Grundy County Mayor Michael Brady, former chairman Robert Foster cites multiple reasons for his resignation, including board members not acting in the best interest of students and faculty, members dividing the community rather than unifying it, and an inability for members to move the school system forward. Foster's resignation comes after a number of heated board meetings over the five Grundy County High School football players charged with attempted aggravated rape. Those players were suspended, and the head football coach, Casey Tate, was removed from his coaching position. It is the most recent case involving students, but two years' worth of incident reports obtained by Channel 3 show it was not the first assault case in the school's history. Foster's resignation comes just two days before the deadline for director of schools Jesse Kinsey to hand over any report detailing abuse from the last five years. The sheriff's office will use those reports in its investigation into if other incidents were not reported to authorities. Foster did not directly comment on that investigation, but noted his concerns, saying, quote, I fear major changes are in order if the board is to truly do its job. Foster's resignation comes just a few days after the or at, before the director of schools after the director of schools decided to restrict the school's SRO's access to surveillance cameras. Now, it's not clear who will fill Foster's seat or who will serve as chairman in his absence. Now, to catch up on this story and how we got here, visit our website for a complete timeline. Live in the studio, Caitlin Chastain, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Caitlin. AAA expects a record number of people traveling for Thanksgiving. Nearly 51 million people will be driving or flying at least 50 miles to their holiday destinations. And about 50 million of them appear to be headed <laughs> westbound on I-24, and it's just uh, hard to get there. It's a daily occurrence, but right before the holiday, as you see from the Mission View camera, it is sure enough backed up. And uh, the estimates are that the number of folks out there are are certainly more than last Thanksgiving weekend. In fact, the number is considerably higher. Channel 3's Tanisha Cordell has a look at traffic on I-75 near the Tennessee Welcome Center for those getting ready to head out. What advice do you have for us, Tanisha? Well, David, I switched it up on you. We're actually over on 24, over up on top of Sugar's Ribs. Traffic has just been something drivers have been dealing with all day long. If you could take a look behind me, all you see is red and white headlights illuminating the highway. Uh, and granted, it's been more hectic in other areas, but it's definitely been an issue in Chattanooga. Now, AAA says uh, people in from our area are expected to be traveling in numbers we haven't seen since 2005. Now, with that being said, 89% of traffic Travelers are expected to drive this season. Now, if you're impatient like me and don't want to sit in this mess, adjust your schedule or change your route. Uh, you might even consider taking a bypass route or around the larger cities like Nashville and Atlanta. You might even just want to turn on the radio and listen to the traffic reports or stop at rest stops and wait until the worst has passed. Now, you can, of course, keep up with traffic delays on our website, wrcbtv.com, under the traffic tab. For now, live in Chattanooga, Tanisha Cordell, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.
Thanks, Tanisha. Chattanooga police are asking for your help to solve a cold case. A man was shot and killed in May of this year, and police are looking for the killer. Channel 3's Greg Glover has details in Crime Stoppers. We have some new facts in this case that we've featured before. It's a possibility Marcus Bradfield's shooting was a total accident. Perhaps a gun went off in an adjacent neighborhood. We are again putting the case out to you for information with the promises of reward cash and complete anonymity. Um, we do not think that the victim was targeted and we think that you know this is a random or an accident incident. So many things about this case are puzzling, but the end result is Marcus Bradfield is gone. This 20 year old father had moved to Chattanooga to escape the mean streets of the Windy City. He had been here about five months. He was on the right track. He was not involved in any disorders with anyone that we know of. Bradfield worked at McDonald's and late on the night of May 13th, he was walking home. Chattanooga Police Sergeant Victor Miller explains. The victim and his girlfriend were just walking down this path that they do every day. They walk to and from work. And so while they were on their way home, that's when they heard the gunshot ring out and he succumbed to his injuries there. Some reported hearing two bursts of gunfire, but as of yet, the evidence only shows one shot, the one that killed Marcus Bradfield. Sometimes whenever there's a shooting, one shot can sound like multiple shots if it comes between a building and things like that. From the injuries that we found when we were going through the autopsy with the medical examiner's office lead us to believe that the shot came from a distance and that it was across the street um, from where the victim was at. It appears that the suspect was behind Mayo's and it could have been, you know, a stray bullet. It could have been an accidental discharge. It could be anything like that. This was late on a Saturday night in the spring. There were a lot of people around. Brainerd Road is heavily traveled. There were people outside Mayo's having drinks and dinner. If you're one of those people you've yet to talk to police, we want to hear from you. But there are also other ways that you can aid this investigation. If you yourself accidentally shot a gun that night or if you know your friend or family member did that and it was an accident call into crime stoppers provide that tip was someone shooting at an animal in the area did someone accidentally discharge a firearm while cleaning it did you or someone fire in self-defense any of these possibilities could lead to answers for this family these two victims because she was shot at too but although she did not receive any injuries um, both of them were walking from work, doing the right thing, and simply trying to go home. A couple more things here. Bradfield had not run afoul of the law since he had been in town, but if you know of a beef he may have had with someone else, call in. Also, if you're in and around the scene there on Brainerd Road, you live there, you've noticed maybe some bullet holes in your home or in some other place, please call 698-3333. It's man 24-7. Up to $1,000 is up for grabs and we'll never ask who you are. David Simmons. Greg, thank you. And coming up on Eyewitness News at 6, two arrests have been made in connection to a double homicide from March in Polk County. And Chattanooga police are looking for the person who stole a Salvation Army red kettle on Lee Highway yesterday. Well, we had some pretty nice weather for today. Tomorrow's looking very good, too, and even Black Friday. We'll take a peek into the weekend coming up on my seven-day forecast. And this is a live look it's from the corner of MLK and Market, where EPB unveiled its holiday window display just a few minutes ago. The holiday windows at that building have been part of the holidays and part of EPB for more than 70 years.
with coverage you can count on. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 6. Chattanooga police are looking for the man who stole a Salvation Army red kettle full of cash from a bell ringer. The kettle had about $200 inside. It was taken from the Food City near Lee Highway and Shalliford Road yesterday afternoon. The bell ringer says the man took out his wallet like he was going to make a donation and then quickly grabbed the kettle and jumped into a car and sped off. Why are you going to steal from somebody trying to get help? And when you can go out and do the same thing I'm doing, go sign up to ring the bell. Gladys Irvin chased after the man, but he got into the car and rode off. Officials say this is the first red kettle theft in the history of Chattanooga's bell ringing campaign. If you have any information, please help investigators call Chattanooga Police. Two arrests have been made in connection to a double homicide in Polk County from March. 36-year-old Valerie Hart was arrested in Texas Tuesday for the murder of 52-year-old Larry Jeffries and his roommate, Jeremy Walker, 27. Their bodies were discovered by a family member at their home on Amber Way. Valerie Hart is in the Gregg County, Texas jail awaiting extradition. And 20-year-old Aaron Presley is in custody here in Chattanooga. The TBI put Presley on their top 10 most wanted list today. This afternoon, authorities at Silverdale Detention Center confirmed Presley was at their facility. He was indicted by a Polk County grand jury earlier this month for his connection in the death of Larry Jeffries and Jeremy Walker, as well as other charges. The Hamilton County Sheriff's Office has released the name of the man killed on Flat Top Mountain yesterday. 74-year-old Malcolm Lee Varner died when the ATV he was riding crashed near Beverly Drive. The Sheriff's Office believes it was accidental. Well, the Dade County Sheriff's Office is warning residents about a scam. A man with a southern accent says his name is Gary Miller and he is a sergeant with the Dade County Sheriff's Office. He calls people and tells them they have missed jury duty and they owe a thousand dollar fine or they face arrest. He demands payment immediately over the phone. Now, this is a scam. Law enforcement agencies do not contact people this way who have missed jury duty. And next here on Eyewitness News at 6, it was a day of giving for student athletes at Howard High School, providing Thanksgiving for the community. And as we take a look outside, Chief Meteorologist Paul Barris is keeping his eye on the skies too for your Thanksgiving Day forecast. In fact, he'll even look ahead into the weekend in just a few moments. Tomorrow on Eyewitness News Today, students at Dawnville Elementary are already thinking about their letters to Santa. Christmas right around the corner, you guys want to give your best Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Ho, ho, ho. ho. Christmas, everybody. That was so good. <laughs> the kids at Donville Elementary are gearing up for Santa Claus, so we're asking them what they're asking from the big guy. Plus, we got a little help from our new junior reporter. You don't want to miss the cuteness starting Thanksgiving morning at 4.30.
A lesson in giving today at Howard High School. The football team and cheerleaders spent today cooking and getting ready for Thanksgiving. The student athletes took time off from their Thanksgiving holiday to give back to their community. Channel 3's Brittany Beggs was there. It's an attitude of gratitude. Howard High School athletes and coaches spent the afternoon giving back to their neighborhood with what they call Tiger Givings. Students showed up this morning at 10 a.m., setting up tables, chairs, and getting ready to open their doors to the community, where neighbors were welcomed with a free Thanksgiving dinner. Not a lot of schools do this, like, not a lot of people do it, honestly. So it's just, it gives me hope to see that our school is doing something different to help other people. Football player and cheerleader Tori and Geneza say the community has done so much for them. They set aside their time to give back. Just to do this, it really makes me happy. It made me feel better about a lot of things. Head coach John Starr says once people found out about the Thanksgiving dinner, more and more people pitched in. My mom found out what was going on and she got excited. She cut some stuff, my sister cooked, and you know, it just, it just kind of spread like that. Star says over the years they've had donation after donation to the football facility for brand new shoulder pads and helmets. They wanted to give back and Tiger Givings was the perfect time. Coach John Starr says the number one thing they want is the players to grow. They've spent time on them becoming better athletes. It's time they focus on them becoming better people. In the studio, meteorologist Brittany Beggs, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. So good to see that. Great people there at Howard, and I'd like to see that become an annual thing. That's mm -hmm. a nice gesture. That yeah, is. Now we want to check in with Chief Meteorologist Paul Bears. I'd like to see this weather become a, an annual thing. What do you think? Clear sky, smooth uh -huh. sailing. What do you have for us, Paul? Well, you know, probably we're going to have to pay for this sooner or later, but right now it's looking pretty good. I hear there's a big game down at uh, Jordan Hare Stadium. Uh, I think they do this every year. They switch back and forth uh, between the Alabama site and the Auburn site, and the uh, weather's looking really good, just partly cloudy skies, 60s to begin with. By the time the game's over with, it'll be in the upper 50s, so no problem there. Terrific Thanksgiving for us. Warmer on Friday. Cloudy coming up on Saturday. All the cloudiness is down in the south. And uh, the big wave of moisture is going to be hitting uh, Florida and south Georgia, but especially Florida. They're going to see lots of rain. The rain is just starting to move on shore now through the panhandle of Florida, move it off to the north and east. For us, nothing. There are some snow showers moving through Wisconsin, Illinois, and Iowa. Currently, it's 42 Altamont and about 53 in the city. 49 Dalton and 49 in Cleveland with 44 in Murphy. Winds out of the northeast at about 7. 57, 37, the high and the low for today. And just about as nice a day as you can imagine. 56 Lafayette, mid-50s Fort Payne. 57 Scottsboro, Dalton, also in the Chatsworth. Oh, it's 58 in Calhoun, all the way to LJ. 58 in Red Bank and East Ridge, too. With Trenton hit 58, sort of Lakeside with Cleveland at 56. Sidey Daisy was 54 in Ringle also. At 54, Lookout Mountain about 50, and then 54 up in the Dunlap. Kegel Mountain a little bit cooler at 48, about 50 in Colmont, and 56 at 10 Mile in Spring City with 53 Turtle Town and Murphy. Got all the way up to 60 with loads of sunshine. Now there's going to be lots of rain. You know anybody in Florida tell them it's going to be wet. They probably know it already though. Plenty of rain down there, good probably two to five inches of rain in spots, and big thunderstorms too. And then, uh, but I don't see any severe weather, just lots of rain. And the dry weather continues for us right into Black Friday. In the Saturday, we see some changes as the cold front approaches. We'll see a few more clouds rolling in. Those clouds will be out of here by Saturday night. And Sunday, looks like a dry day, but it will be a cool day coming up too. So for tonight, we're looking at clear skies, 34 for the low, light winds. Tomorrow, 57, plenty of sunshine again, light winds. And then for tomorrow night, clear and cold, 37. Could see some patchy uh, frost or fog, uh, especially uh, late and into the morning. Coming up into Friday, 62, maybe some morning fog, and then a lot more clouds on Saturday at 63. Sunday, 59. Monday, about 60 degrees. And Tuesday, splendid at 64. Maybe more clouds Wednesday, and a chance for a shower coming up on Wednesday, too. But uh, this holiday weekend is looking fantastic, so just enjoy. Thank you very much, Paul. East Ridge community members are putting together a Christmas festival and parade. And that parade was scheduled for last weekend, last Saturday. You remember Saturday evening was pretty messy. Well, the festival and parade are now scheduled for Friday, December 8th, 7 p.m. at Camp Jordan Park in East Ridge. 
they will have caroling, bands, vendors, all kinds of activities. In fact, they're going to hold a meeting Monday evening at 6 at the community center just to make sure they have all the pieces of the puzzle put together. Organizers say they're still accepting entries for that December 8th parade. If you would like to know more, we have information on our website and in our mobile app. There you go. Up next, South Pittsburgh is set for a semifinal rematch with the team that knocked them out last year. Mm -hmm. And Paul Shaheen says, looks like we can cross one name off Tennessee's head coach wish list. Yes, uh, the latest from Knoxville, mm -hmm. Chip Kelly, Mr. Oregon, then not so great at San Francisco and then with Philadelphia. He appears to be a no-go. We'll go over what we've read and what we've heard, plus the basketball balls pick up a top 25 overtime win. Don't miss it. Sports is next. Well, let's begin with the latest news out of Knoxville. According to the USA Today, Chip Kelly was not only offered the Tennessee job, but has turned it down. According to the same article, he also turned away Nebraska, but is interested in both Florida and the opening at UCLA. So where does that leave Tennessee? Great question. We know this. Athletic Director John Kerry remains tight-lipped, and he's currently working from the Bahamas with the men's basketball team. Not a bad gig. Now, despite the Auburn loss, Georgia still controls its own playoff destiny. That is, of course, if they don't get caught looking ahead. Because if the past proves anything, Georgia Tech has a history of tripping up the Bulldogs. Tech has won two of their last three late November meetings. Trust me, Georgia Tech has got our undivided attention. They're very hard to prepare for as far as the SEC championship. We have to work about that. Come. You know, Saturday night, Sunday. Georgia and Georgia Tech play Saturday at noon on ABC. Then Georgia can sit back and figure out who they'll meet in Atlanta. They can do it with less stress if they beat Georgia Tech. It's Alabama and Auburn. The Iron Bowl, a 3-30 kick on CBS. 
on the prep beat. Three local Tennessee schools are in the state semifinals on Friday. One is a repeat offender. South Pittsburgh is back in the 1A semifinals. And it just so happens to be a rematch of last year's semifinal. Greenback won that meeting. South Pitt will look to return the favor at Greenback on Friday night. That was the Pirates' last loss. Head coach Vic Grider says a lot has changed since then. I think we're a little more seasoned. You know, last year uh, I think we were probably honestly still a year away. Uh, I think our seniors have done a really good job of having us kind of stay, take that next step. I think confidence is going to be big for us, you know, believing that we can go to their place and, and win the game. But, uh, you know, again, I really like my football team. All right, at this point, we had the Tennessee Volunteers basketball team mm -hmm. in the Bahamas. Nice. Envious, anybody? Yeah, very. They <laughs> beat 18th ranked Purdue today in the quarterfinals of the Battle for Atlantis. Mm. Still looking for Atlantis, I hear. So, <laughs> with uh, six seconds left, Tennessee took a one point lead in overtime to beat Purdue. Those That's highlights great. are missing right now. We're going to have okay. them fresh tonight at Good. 11. Well, I want to be sure to see that. Definitely you know, highlight. I got to tell you, having done the news here and we've lived here a long time, when you hear about South Pittsburgh and Red Bank being in the, play, the playoffs, and it, it's like, wow, I feel like we're back in the 80s, the 90s, you know, it's just like. Isn't it fun? Sounds familiar. Yeah, it does. Tradition. Glad they're Red doing Bank well. at Alcoa, perennial mm -hmm. powerhouse. Big, big matchup for them. Head yeah. coach Chad Grabowski thinks they have the talent to pull it off. All right. I think so, too. We're pulling for them, and we appreciate the update on that, Paul. Mm -hmm. How about an update on the weather for tonight? Uh, tonight looks great. Clear skies. Uh, temperatures are uh, uh, cooling down already. Uh, the evening out forecast looks like this. We got 53 right now with the clear skies, about 43 at 9 o'clock, and by midnight should be about 41. We're dropping in the 30s uh, for tonight. 57 for Thanksgiving Day. Black Friday, 37 and 62. Uh, low to mid 60s coming up Saturday, near 60 Sunday, and Monday and Tuesday look pretty good too. All right, Paul, thank you. Okay. We want to remind you we're just 70, 17, not 72 days away <laughs> from Share Your Christmas. Your donations will be accepted, and it's the big day, Friday, December 8th. And it's the 33rd annual event. We'll be, of course, at First Tennessee Pavilion, right across from Findlay Stadium in Chattanooga, as well as locations in Cleveland and Dalton. We encourage you to drop off some non-perishable food, or if you don't have time to do that, bring by a little cash or a check, because the food bank makes your money go a long way. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a great one. We hope you have a great evening this, tonight. Be safe out there. Another big news day. Let's lean back and watch NBC News next on Channel 3.
One, two, three, whoa, that is loud. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. I'll just keep that. How how far can I turn that down? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Do you worry that your Thanksgiving will include, am I going to run the prompt right? Do you worry that your Thanksgiving will include a serving of drama? How can you avoid a squabble with that relative you see only once a year? Tips to keeping things peaceful at 11. And I'll have the latest forecast for your holiday travel and shopping plans.